In the last episode, we picked up our friend Tim in Martinique and continued sailing south. Along the way, we almost drowned while spearfishing, but managed to catch a barracuda for lunch. In this episode, we spend time in Bekwe and the Tobago Keys before finally making it down to Grenada. It's the morning. What are we doing today? Going to Bekwe. We're going to Bekwe. Damn. Mm. It's Bekwe day. <laughs> Bekwe day. <laughs> New Island day. Alright, it's Bekwe Day. After a very short night in St. Vincent, we are on our way to Bekwe. And it's kind of, we'll be in the Grenadines at that point, and that's sort of been the destination all along. We don't really have any expectations necessarily, but it's on the southern end of our, our trip. And I don't know, it's just exciting. Little tiny Caribbean white sand islands. It's also a little bittersweet actually because once we get down to the Grenadines, Grenada is our last stop as we head south, which means that probably in a month or so we're going to be turning around and we're not the halfway point of our journey, but um, turning around and heading back north, which I can't believe we've come this far already. Yeah, so we got a long way to go north though. We have a long way to go north. The current plan is to be back on the east coast start of hurricane season and sail up the east coast but still it's a little it's kind of crazy that we're already getting here yeah feels like a like a halfway point almost kind of yeah You're a little tilty there but hey right <laughs> <laughs> that way was a pretty intense sail loosen up the bank just a touch there's no need for all of that power Strongest the cat and I have seen, and, and not even just guts and gusts. The sustained winds were yeah, it rowdy. Was, and it was the definitely gusts were over bad. 25, gusting much further than that. We're in Bekwe, and it is the windiest anchorage that we've ever been in. Uh, people are freaking out. People are moving mooring balls. We got a lot of charters who don't know what they're doing and almost crashed into a couple of boats. It's been it's been a lively afternoon. Welcome to Beckway! <laughs> After a windy blowy day, we're rewarded with a pretty nice sunset. It is pretty. And it was blowing. So we're getting drinks, Super Bowl Sunday, having a night out. We didn't actually know it was Super Bowl Sunday until the bartender told us. Super Bowl 2016. Woo. We were there for the first and honored to be Gotta here. Gotta do some kickoff shots. What'd you get? Tequila. America. It's, it's well tailored to cruisers. It seems like the people there are doing pretty well financially. Everybody's comfortable. Everybody's making a living. It's a really harmonious relationship between the locals and all the yachties, which is great because in a lot of places, it's not the case. There's a, a lot of tension. And it was neat to just feel welcome. They were happy for the business. We were happy to be there. Yep. And just in general, I think probably felt more welcome there than any other place we've been. Stadium, and we are headed to the Tobago Keys to check out more of the glorious Grenadines. That was the most kind of Caribbean Coast Guard looking place that I've been. Summer comes 
Yeah, it was very remote too. There's, I mean, they're tiny little islands, so there's nothing on them. Yeah. Cheers to the prettiest place we've been. Cheers. Cheers. Let's go spy on Will. <laughs> So Will and Tim are gonna do a project today that will hopefully save us from having to replace our head sail in the future. So on the leech in the foot of the, the jib, there's a piece of canvas attached that's designed to take the brunt of the UV rays. And we had noticed a couple days prior that ours was starting to tear in a in one spot, about a three foot rip, and starting to flap around. So it's not the it's not the sail itself, it's just the sacrificial bit, but still we didn't want it to spread. So we decided we bought some uh, sail repair tape as an intermediate um, measure and decided to pull the sail down off the roller furling unit to patch it up. All right, I'm gonna bring it out. It's not coming down, the, the halyard's not coming down the track. We shouldn't have blown the halyard first. Why? Look at the top. And that turned into a bit of a debacle. We made the mistake of blowing the halyard and then unfurling, unfurling the jib, the jib yeah. which meant that the halyard just got all tangled around the, the top of the yeah. sail and around the forestay. <laughs> and there's no way to untangle it, so we Scratched put, her heads put for can, a minute. Yep. Put Cat in the bosun's chair. Went up, <laughs> went up the Sent her up the top of the mast to untangle it. She's really good at that from doing it with the fishing line. <laughs> She untangled it, we tightened back up on the halyard, brought her back down, and then unfurled the sail, then, then blew, blew the halyard, halyard pulled the sail down. down. That, that worked, worked a lot better. Yeah, it, went, it went really well. $25 roll of tape. still on board. When the boat started sailing, because it was backwinded, I got a little nervous. <laughs> After a couple days, it was time to get down to Grenada, because Tim's leaving us in the morning to fly yeah. back to the States. It's a cool place. This is a really, really cool place. I can see why a lot of people spend large portions of their lives here. Um, I don't really want to leave. Plenty of those There's around. There's plenty of those around. What are we doing, Kat? We're leaving the boat. Goodbye, Paradox. We're going to a hotel. Why are we going to a hotel? Because sometimes you just can't be on a boat anymore and you need a bed that doesn't do this and you need a shower and you need no rolling and you need air conditioning and crappy reality TV. Goodbye Paradox. Don't sink.